Hi, everybody. It's grade time. I know nobody likes to get grades at school. Well, maybe the nerdy kids did, but we're going to give out some twins grades here as we creep up on the mid portion of the 2024 season. It's time for everybody to get locked on grades and twins. You are locked on twins, your daily Minnesota twins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello again, everybody. My name is David Brown, and I'm a co-host of Locked On Twins, your number one place for twins discord, discourse, etc., and maybe discord. (laughs) If we just start to yell at each other, maybe we should do that. Um, Yeah, absolutely. My co-host is Brandon Warren. And mm-hmm. you can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Answer Dave Brown, at Answer Dave Brown. And Brandon is at, at Brandon underscore Warren. And he always wants you to unfollow him, but you know that's that's sort of up to you. Uh, Brandon, tell him a, a bit about yourself and why you're here. Yeah, so I've been covering the Twins for about a decade and a half now. And so between you and me, we've got some experience covering the old beautiful ball game and so before that, I was a Twins fan for a long time. I've been consuming Twins-centric games media for, this is year 32. So it's it's been a hot minute, let's just say. I'm a pseudo-professional, a semi-professional, uh, semi-employed. I've been uh, a sports writer since basically the summer of 98. That's 1998. That's the Sammy Sosa, uh, Mr. Mark McGuire season when I was uh, – an AP stringer, and I would get quotes for uh, the AP writers about the, the great uh, Cubs team of the time and 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 their opponents. And uh, basically, I've uh, grown from there. I've written about things, uh, won an award or two, although that's really a long time ago now. I've covered a World Series. Mm-hmm. I've been to some all-star games and now uh, you know, worked for Yahoo Sports, Valley Sports, uh, Access Twins, Hey, and now basically I'm yours for uh, the, the conceivable future. And it's good. It's a been a fun twin season to kind of get going on. Hey, do we got any, is this show sponsored by the way, Brandon? You no, know, it is. I'm glad you asked. Today's episode is brought to you by tax network USA. So locked on twins again, tax network USA is bringing us to you today. Did you know that it's never too late to resolve your tax issues with the IRS? Don't wait. Reduce your tax debt and get help from a team of licensed tax professionals. Just call 1-800-549-1000 or visit TNUSA.com slash locked on. So we've got kind of a a special show and we're going to do a couple of these. We're going to mix it. We're going to split it up into offense and defense and we're going to give grades out to the twins. Uh, I I don't consider myself a particularly hard grader. Uh, I'm fair, but I'm realistic. I've got, I don't know if Brandon, we kind of did this on our own, but I, I came up with just numbers, basically like percentages. I'll give uh, offense uh, up to 100 and defense up to 100 with A's being the typical, not Oakland A's. We don't want that. <laughs> From no. 90 to 100 is about an A, 80 to 90 is about a B, and so forth on down the line. And, uh, you know, I give people who aren't on the team anymore numbers. So I'll go a- after the fact, I'll, I'll wait the grades up. So the, the players who played more have more to do. It's kind of, it's not very scientific, but it is, it is going to be uh, an attempt at fairness for your 2024 twins. So this, this is technically the midterm. That's true. It is the midterm. I think you uh, twins fans, you're going to read about and see lots of grades coming out in the next week or so. Cause we're just about at the midway point of the season. We're not quite at, I think we're like 75 games we're trailblazers. We're we're going out yes. and get in front of it. And so you know what? Follow like a bus. Way. We're going to get in front of it like a bus. I don't and uh, we're going to tell you what we think about how uh, the, the Twins grayed out so far. Uh, like I said, most of it's going to be players that you have on the roster right now. But we'll, I have a grade for Edouard Julien, even though he's down in the minors. I got to think of what A, B, C, D uh, translates into French. I'm better with Spanish than I am with French. So He's getting a grade. I did not grade Matt Walner. I feel like I forgot Matt Walner. Maybe Brandon. He homered again tonight. He keeps doing that. I mean, he's 
we know we all know Walner's got Triple A down. So yeah, okay. it, it isn't yeah. that is it. Did Brooks Lee play second base? I have, I didn't look, but um, oh, that one slipped my mind. I think I think so, and I'm gonna check it while we're uh, tap dancing here a little bit hey. because I think that that's his path. And you know we'll have a show soon because I've been kind of kicking around whether or not the Twins should be planning to make any moves. So I think we'll have your opinion. We'll have mine. No, Lee was back at shortstop tonight. So uh, mm -hmm. false alarm there. And uh, no home run, but he was two for five. Well, he so we'll keeps hitting. I know it's 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 kind of relatively easier for the AAA guys to get hits. So we can't get too excited about his OPS and, and, and Brooks's production there because lots of guys are hitting but, AAA. But, I mean, there's also something to be said for, like, everybody wants to DFA Kyle Farmer. Everybody wants to DFA Manuel Margot, Christian Vasquez. And like I, I was pointing out that Kyle Farmer in his last 30 days or 28 days or whatever has uh 119 weighted runs created plus and plus defensive value. And everybody's like, well, that's 30 at bats or 30 plate appearances. Yeah, not factually inaccurate, but he's playing the role he was brought in to play in that time frame. And they didn't cut him when he was playing lousy. Why would they suddenly cut him now when he's playing well and doing what they asked him to do? Yeah. Yes, the season numbers are ugly. But you don't cut a guy with that level of experience to bring up a guy who has never played in the major leagues. And so I, I, I get why people are frustrated with the idea of Kyle Farmer, but I don't think he's going anywhere. But we'll do we'll do an episode on that of changes. Are they coming? Are they not? And, uh, you know, we'll see what people have to say, because I think my takes will probably get people pretty ticked off. Well, that's, uh, I mean, that's not terrible in a way to get people to, to get people uh, agitated in a good way about they, what, what did Reggie they Jackson about say? The they don't boo nobody's kid. Well, that's true. That's true. Um, so I have, uh, you know, I, I've, I've broken mine down basically into outfield and infield and then the players from there into offense and defense. So that's how, is that kind of what you did as well uh, as far as your grades, Brandon? Oh, I'm just going to adapt to yours. I, I'm going to oh, be right. I'm going to be right in lockstep with you. You know where I will differ, or whatever. Um, you know that that's going to be the fun of it. So, um, you know what though, we should uh, we should probably dive right in. How about this? Let's take our first break. Yes, and then that's what uh, I was trying to mentally. I was trying to do that. Yes. Yeah, we can we can jump in on that real quick here. We just got the one spot, and so we will give some love to our uh, uh, some of our new friends, and then when we come back, we'll dive into the infielders and um, bleed out to the outfielders to wrap this thing up. But again, first, let's not bleed out. That's not. No. I don't want to do that. No, no, no. I know what you mean. You're right. All right. Quick second here. We have some new friends over at Stitch Fix, and I'm wearing one of my new Stitch Fix shirts right now. It's a nice, almost like a salmon. It's one of those, it's almost like a fishing shirt, you know, the light, kind of airy material. I was asking my wife if I th she thought I could pull one of those off, and uh, she said, well, you're not going to know until you try. So, uh, so far- Are there any lures in it? Are there any lures? Uh, let's see here. Um, you know what? I think- I think the lures have been relocated. No guardy lures, no uh, nothing like that. So, but anyway, Stitch Fix is a company where you tell them your style and you just kind of fill out a questionnaire, and then their stylists send you packages of five items. You can get shoes, belts, shorts, pants, you name it, shirts, jackets. I had my black jacket on in our most recent episode, and I love that one. My wife. Finally saw it today, gave it an A++++, so that one's going to be hanging around. But again, you get a stylist who figures out your size, what you like, and they kind of try to tailor it for you. Like, I usually wear these schlubby black t-shirts from Duluth Trading Company that fit. It's kind of funny. They're very comfortable, but they're super old. They got the pit stains and everything. My wife is sick of them. She's like, get more color in your wardrobe. That's what Stitch Fix is for. You just... Let them know what you want, what your budget is, or you can just go on there and shop freestyle. There's a lot of options, and um, you know I've been doing it a couple of different tenures here over the last six, seven years. Love Stitch Fix, highly recommended. It. It's style that makes you feel um, that makes you feel as you 
No, makes you feel good as you look. I'm trying to read this and I was getting a little confused. Now is the best time to get started though at stitchfix.com slash MLB and get a hundred bucks off. That's $25 off your first four fixes for a limited time only. And if you don't want anything, you can send it back. It's a prepaid envelope. So you just drop it in your mail and it's uh, off. But if you do keep all five items, you get a special discount as well. I believe it's 20%. So stitchfix.com slash MLB, get a hundred bucks off your first four fixes. Again, stitchfix.com slash MLB. You must redeem it within seven days of signing up. And the offer does not include kid fixes. That's our main sponsor tonight. That is our first one. And then we will circle back here in a little bit. But yeah, we love the folks at Stitch Fix. Uh, I think I'm making this salmon shirt work. But um, you know what? We'll have to wear it outside to... Is, does it you also know. come in a trout shirt? Or you know, can we update for today? A salmon's more like 95. Because no, they were all out of trout. <laughs> Injury. Uh, at least it doesn't smell like that, you know, as far as I know. So we're grading the Twins mid-season, mid-term grades. We're going to start in the infield. We're going to start with the catchers. The infield, by the way, my infield includes Willie Castro. Willie Castro could go to the outfield as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I put him in the infield. I, maybe it actually would have been better to put him in the outfield. But, um, the but let's start with the catchers. Valdelli. Right. Well, he's not doing – he's not – these aren't his grades. So um, <laughs> Vasquez I gave uh, – for, for his offense, 40 out of 100. And defense, 95, because he's red all over the place in those – Yeah. Uh, in those stat cast numbers, and he's probably good on the fielding Bible too. Uh, grades out to a C. He's basically doing what – I know they want him to hit more, but he's basically giving them – what they thought he would. And when he plays, he plays very good defense. Yeah. So Fangraphs has him at minus 0.2 war, but a 6.7 run value for defense, which is quite easily the best on the team. Byron Buxton has played 13 more games and has a lower value uh, by more than two runs. So the, the people who say, Oh, DFA Vasquez, he's not giving you anything. Go get one of the rookies. The twins are probably the only team in MLB that has only had two guys catch for them in the last year. Plus. Vasquez isn't going anywhere. He is giving them exactly what they want behind the plate, at the plate, certainly struggling. And we've seen with all the veteran guys who started with a struggle that uh, they've come out of it except for Vasquez. But again, <clears throat> Vasquez is in no danger here. Teams are perfectly fine with having guys like Christian Vasquez as their catcher uh, if the rest of the team is is going to win. And we've, saw, we've seen it with Vasquez himself in Boston. He did have a good offensive year in 2019 but he's been a defensive first guy. Martin Maldonado was the guy in Houston, and now Vasquez and Jeffers as a timeshare. I mean, there are a lot of teams who would love to have that catching tandem behind the plate. Jeffers has cooled off and, and been kind of chilly at the plate for the most part. For Oh, by the way, uh, C for me for uh, okay. Vasquez. Defense is so good. The bat is so bad. Right. You just got to split the difference. All right. C's all around then for Vasquez. Yep. Which is appropriate. Um Ryan Jeffers, I, I graded out as a B. Um, his solid B offense, it was an A for a while. He's been chill for a while. On defense, uh, more like a C, but I'm uh, lifting him up a little bit because his offense has been so good. Uh, defense, not you know nearly as good as Vasquez, but still better than a lot of other catchers. And I, I grade him out as a B overall. How much credit do you give him for being like the one guy who could hit at the beginning of the year too? Like he had to be the guy offensively for a while. Right. Well, and you know, that time could come again. These things right. are all kind of cyclical. You've, you've made the point before about how you look at a, a guy's numbers at the end of the season and you know, rarely for long periods of time is this hypothetical player, that player that his, his numbers were at the end, there's peaks and valleys and I expect Jeffers to get going again, but he definitely uh, at, at, at one point, uh, you know, from the second week of the season to the fourth week of the season was one of the best hitters in the league. You know, you were seeing him up there with uh, some of the uh, great hitters, no matter the position. So it was, it was important that he hit when he did. And I think yep. he'll hit better as we go. So are you saying in Ryan Jeffers, are you going to rule again? Uh, well, he's not French, so, or maybe he is, and I just don't know it, but. Uh, he he will rule again. 
very soon, I think. Yes. I was going to say, he strikes me as more Canadian than French, but uh, no, he's from North Carolina. Right. Well, they, they have North Carolina and Quebec have some similarities. You, you, you're, you'll go out in the woods and tame uh, some kind of bear at some point if you're in either of those places. So that's not unusual. Uh, well, speaking of that, then I got, I got, uh, oh, I got, I got, end. I got a B for Jeffers too. Um, oh, yeah. Right. So good. You, get to, you get to great people too. I, I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. The defense, the defense has been fine ish. It's not been great as far as compared to Vasquez, but there's a reason why they have the timeshare they have. So no issues with Jeffers. The bat still looks really good as a catcher, even though he's got like five or six hits this month. That's how much goodwill he banked in the first month, uh, two months of the season. Jefferson Vasquez off the books or in the books, over the books. Edouard Julian, even though he's in AAA, I give him a D plus. Uh, the offense just kind of sank a little bit too far for me. He, he started out well, and even his numbers with the walks overall are not terrible when you, you know, I, but I just can't give him too much credit there. His defense uh, has improved a lot. Uh, solid uh, C plus on defense overall. I give him a D plus uh, with hopefully room to improve here in the second half, unless it's Brooks Lee. Yeah, let's see. I would say it's a D on offense just because um, it's hard though, because he's still at a 98 weighted runs created plus like legit league average offense, but it just looks so dang ugly. 207, 309, 367. Um, when you grade, it's like when you're doing really good in school and then you start slipping, your grade drops a lot faster and it's hard to get it back up there. So to me, the fact that he was as shaky as he was at the end kind of skews down. He's somewhere between a C minus and a D plus for me because the defense was so improved and he was still taking his walks, but he completely lost who he was within the strike zone. And that's why I'm leaning more D plus than C minus. Uh, I still believe he will rule again. It's just that as a young player, you know, these things happen. L- growth and development are far from linear, and he's probably exhibit A of that. Um, I don't like to fail anybody, uh, but I'm, I'm giving Kyle Farmer a D. Uh, offense, uh, 55 out of 100, and defense, 70, which is maybe the benefit of the doubt and uh, kind of a low D. Not quite a D minus, but Farmer, I think that the proof is in the pudding so far. Yeah, I don't have any disagreements with that. He's graded out as a decent enough defender. 75 weighted runs created plus is certainly not great. And again, we get deceived by how bad the offensive environment has been so far. We'll see how much it changes as the weather heats up because that is obviously a factor as well. But yeah, I saw a D. Uh I'll say D plus just because I think the versatility and the fact that he's kind of been on the upswing, I'm going to give him that slight boost there, but it's still not good. Jose Miranda grades out really well. Uh, Offensively, I I give him a a B and maybe a C for a defense. uh, He's caught a lot of balls. Uh, He's got no range, though, according to a stat cast and uh, the places that I've looked. So I, I drag him down a little bit on that. Uh, B minus overall for Miranda, which sounds more negative than I'd like, but I think that could go up in the second half too. Yeah, and I mean, I, you'd like him to take more walks, but he's not striking out, which means he's hitting 280, putting the ball in play. The walks will come in terms of even just respect walks, you know, yeah. uh, you know, based on guys seeing that you can hit or not strike out, you'll walk more than 4% of the time, which is – pretty much where he's at. The defense has been whatever. He's made some plays that I didn't think he was going to make. And between him and Royce Lewis, it's right now for me, it's kind of a pick them because Royce's throwing has been kind of shaky of late. So I don't really have a problem with either of those guys at third base one over the other. Uh, I mean, obviously I'd rather one or the other than was playing a little better at it, but yeah, for me, Miranda is a solid B. I'd give him a B plus because I also want to figure in the fact that he was so bad and hurt last year that I think I'm giving him just a slight little nudge to a B plus. Uh, you mentioned Royce Lewis. I had him a little better on defense, like a 75 out of 100. Offense, yep. I give him 100. I mean, he's he's the he hasn't been there every game, but uh, I'm not going to take uh, 
points away for injury. It isn't his fault. He's produced as well as any hitter in the league when he's been in there. So it grades out overall to an A minus for me, uh, well, just because his defense is uh, kind of ordinary. When the new kid comes to school, they don't punish him for not being there the rest of the school year. He only gets graded on when he was there. And so, yeah, uh, solid A minus for me too. The defense, and you know, it's been a little more obvious because of the spots where it is has flashed. But um, you know. I think he in in time can be a decent enough third baseman or if second base is his future spot, wherever it is, I am confident that it will not be a has bat will hide him defensively situation. Like Edward Julian might have otherwise been, I think he'll play defense somewhere and be just fine. Probably the surprise of the season, uh, Carlos Santana uh, at 37, 38 years old, uh, producing on offense uh, kind of in, in rare territory. You know, he's he's some of this is on a curve because a, a lot of the offense in the majors isn't that great. Mm -hmm. Give him a very a solid B on offense, an 85 and a 95 on defense. There's only two or three first basemen who are playing better defense than him. And he grades out to, to an A. He's a, as good of a player as they've had so far, maybe with an exception of Joe Ryan or, you know, if you want to go with Correa. The gripe that I had about him defensively in that extra innings game against the Rays is literally the only strike I have against him defensively. And maybe it's the whole thing where if you have friends that maybe aren't as good as looking you as you, you hang out with them when you're around uh, crowds true. because you look a little better that way. And Alex Kirloff has struggled defensively at first base, but Carlos Santana has been everything the twins could have imagined and more. And for someone like me who was upset, they signed him. Well, not upset, but wish they had signed Reese Hoskins instead the twins killed it so far he could go into a slump again and be dfa'd by the middle of august but the boost that he's given them right now in the last eight to 10 15 days it's been incredible his numbers are now he's like a 120 something weighted runs created plus his best mark since uh like 2019 i mean he's he's been everything they could have asked for and uh and then some willie castro uh who you could put in the outfield i put in the infield he played a lot of games at short, has played a lot of games at third. Uh, grades out to a B overall. As defense, actually, uh, the numbers aren't great um, anywhere, really, but uh, yeah. his hitting has been, uh, you know, the last couple years, he's really turned into a good hitter, uh, mm -hmm. which is saying something in this environment. I give him a, a B overall, a solid B, high B, B plus on hitting, and maybe a C plus on defense. I'm going to I'm going to nudge him a little bit defensively just because he's so willing and so competent if not actually a plus everywhere he plays and shortstop being one of those options gives him just the slightest of a nudge for me. He's a B plus because I think he's playing at something like a bananas for something Fangraphs war pace over a full season. What a find he's been after being non-tendered by the Tigers and you know He's had stretches where you're like, oh, man, he's 0-2. He's swinging at everything. And then he squares one up, drives it in the outfield, gets a base hit, and then is a factor on the bases. I mean, he's he's given you everything you could have imagined and then some in the leadoff spot where the Twins have been especially weak this season. Last infielder I have is Correa, who, uh, who's with his surges offensively, a solid A, almost A-plus offensively. He's been so good. Um Maybe not all season, but he, he's up there now and having one of his better seasons in years at the plate. And then on defense, the uh, range, not what it was, according to StatCast and other places. But he gets to what he gets to, and he makes some plays that other guys don't. Um, tricky stuff that's uh, with his hands that are uh, in his throwing arm. And, you know, there's there's more to it. That I, when you watch him every day from for Carlos Correa than just uh, some of these numbers. He's uh, yeah. aesthetically pleasing, but also he does a lot of dirty work. I don't think there's a better relay man in the game today than Carlos Correa. Um, you know, we saw Jose Siri throw from the outfield, and that was impressive. That's what I think of as Carlos Correa as a relay man. So, uh, yeah, I give him an A. I don't really believe in A pluses because when I went to school, they didn't have them, or at least that's what they told me. Um, Those jerks. Yeah, so I he's an A for me, but everything you could have asked for, dreamed for, and then some. And you know what? He started to rake. That's all you can ask for. All right, we'll uh, we'll dip, we'll get to the outfielders after this break. All right, that sounds great. 
If you are an independent contractor like Dave or me, you need someone to help you with navigating these tax things where you got to have money stashed away for tax time right. or you can pay your estimated stuff. You have a lot of different ways you can do it. And that's where Tax Network USA comes in to help you. At Locked On Twins, we pride ourselves on having you through the off season, regular season and all that stuff. And taxes, believe it or not, are also year round collection season. The IRS can literally come after you pretty much whenever they want. It's not just in April. So if you want to be prepared for that, you don't want your wages garnished, your bank accounts levied, or your property seized, you let the licensed professionals and tax experts at Tax Network USA go to bat for you. With over 14 years of experience and an A-plus rating with the BBB, Tax Network USA has saved their clients over a billion bucks in tax debt. So whether you owe taxes, have complicated taxes, or you finally hit that parlay that made you roll in the green and you need some help correctly filing, hop on the phone, 1-800-549-1000, or navigate on over to tnusa.com slash locked on, or we do have the link in the description below the show, whether you're listening or watching. So again, check out either 1-800-549-1000, tnusa.com slash locked on, or click the link below. Tax Network USA, get some help with your taxes. Hitting the home stretch, part one of our uh, midterm grades for the Twins. And I'll just say this, we can, we can go a little long, so don't feel rushed. Oh, we can. I'm I'm making rules. Back back off, everybody. It's Brandon Rules Maker. I wanted to wrap up one more thing Sam and to Jeremy. give a, an overall grade to the to the infield. I had I gave him 87.5, and I, I actually boosted up to an A minus, even though that's a, a B plus. That's a, really a B plus. But with my curve, and I don't mean it's like a Bly Levin curve. It's it's A minus. Uh, their most of their best players are have been on uh on the infield this year yeah i mean the left side of the infield has been terrific jose miranda has done everything you could have asked of him carlos santana and then you know even the utility guys i mean all in all it's been about the best you could ask for realistically you know you're not not everybody's gonna be the dodgers of a few years ago where you know you plug and play and everybody who plays just absolutely crushes it so yeah for what you would expect for the twins to do on the infield. This has been a very, very good season for the uh, the infield so far. Outfield. Uh, I don't know why I put Kirilov in the outfield. I mean, he did play out there some. Yeah, he's probably been more of a first baseman and more of a DH. I, I think he's injured, balance. so it's it's all what. Sorry. I think for balance, you did it because there's a lot more infielders than outfielders if you have Kirilov. Right. So I gave him a I gave him a D. Uh, which is probably kind 60 for offense and 60 for defense. And it appears that he's been dealing with an injury that he didn't tell anybody about for a while. So, so you can't really give him the benefit of the doubt though. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, it, as much as you want to be like, Hey, he was playing hurt. And so maybe it's not quite fair. He's been the worst defender on the team by a fairly wide margin. And any offensive momentum he started the season with has completely evaporated well beyond the Julienne level. So, right. yeah, it's uh, we, we've reached a point where he is a liability in the sense that um, on the field and the fact that he was on the field, not health wise, not, you know, not being upfront about his health, which again, I know is a complicated issue. Young guys want to play through. They got to solidify their spot. I'm not trying to ding him for that. But at the end of the day, he was hurting the team and, and his, his grade reflects that. Austin Martin, I don't really like the grades that I came up with. I, I he's I'm giving him like uh, C minus at best, probably D plus. Uh, his hitting hasn't been good. Um, his, his offense hasn't really, you know, objectively speaking, been great. I see potential. I see athleticism. Uh, you know, I don't put a lot of stock in a in a bad grade. It's more of an incomplete because he spent a lot of time in the minors. Uh, you know, he made a real nice leaping catch to save their bacon for half an inning the other day in extra innings. That was right. probably his nicest, one of his nicer plays. Wednesday. So he's, he's doing things, uh, but uh, it's so far it's kind of a B plus C minus. Yeah, tricky profile here. 101 weighted runs created plus and a slash of 255, 320, 372 coming into action against Oakland. But that profile – you know, if you have a super utility guy with a high 300 slug and decent on base, 
usually you can make that work like a, a Kyle Farmer, Willie Castro type. But when you're almost five runs negative in defensive value, that pretty much makes you a net neutral. And so I would give him a C minus because he just doesn't give you enough defensively. Uh, the bat has been better since he's come back. And I think to the eye test, he looks like a big leaguer. He looks like a guy who's not, the, the game's not speeding up on him as much as you might think. You know, defensively, right. he's had his moments, not only with the stats, but the eye test. But in general, I see a guy who has a future as a big leaguer. And so I don't think a C- minus is an unfair grade. But I also think that he is going to be um, a, a lot of fun to monitor moving forward. Trevor Larnick, uh, solid B, maybe B minus offensively, uh, good hitter, uh, and they needed it. You know, he he's come through from the left side where maybe some other guys didn't. Uh, defense, they don't ask him to play defense a lot. He DHs quite yep. a bit. Uh, you know, not, not a good doesn't help his grade really, or you know, his WAR or anything like that. But uh, I would give him a a C overall, maybe a C plus. I'm 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 trying to be you know. Uh, optimistic, but also objective and, you know, hard on these guys a little bit and with some room for improvement, hopefully they'll do better. I'm going to give him a B plus because he's 114 weighted runs created plus, but also get this, his uh, weighted on base average is 327. You know, that's basically geek speak for if you take a lot of different things, what would his OBP look like? Yeah. Normalized. His expected weighted on base average is 353. So you have almost a 30 point gap that should be filled in based on, you know, his batted ball profile and, and all that. So I'm going to give him a slight nudge. I'm going to give him an incomplete for the defense because it's not fair to ask him to do more than what they're asking him to do. He hasn't embarrassed himself in the outfield. Kirilov has had moments where he has. Uh, so I would, and maybe again, that's not fair because you're comparing someone to their teammate in general, though, I'm giving him a B plus just because uh, I think he's been better at how he's handled secondary pitches is still not great, still maybe not even good, but he's having more competitive at bats. And so I have to give him some credit where credit is due. He's been a much more complete hitter this time around. Manuel Margot, difficult player to grade because he was so cold for so long and mm -hmm. his defense still isn't very good. Right. Uh, you know, it's, there aren't, it's not like there are guys that you would trust more as secondary right fielders on the roster than him. But at the same time, he hasn't been really good at, the, at that. What he has been good at is against left-handed starting pitching, which is not pinch hitting, not pinch hitting. No, is it like over 18 is a pinch hitter or something. Yeah. I believe that's the number. Um, and you know, you, you're going to have to be, he's going to get more opportunities and you're going to have to be better as a pinch hitter or, coming off the bench. I don't know what his numbers are off the it's, bench. It's but actually in a Rocco offense, though. You know, like right. how you're going to be used, you need to succeed. Yes. Uh, but against starters, he typically gets them off to a pretty good start against lefties. So that's good. It's kind of a, a mixed bag. Uh, the, the grade is a D because that's what the number is. But I feel almost like it could be a C, but if they just played a little better defense, but he's not really doing that. So he hasn't been as advertised defensively. And I don't mean even like when he came up and had a center field profile, right? It's more like there have been some plays where you're just like, bro, right. what are you doing out there? I'm giving him a D he's had enough moments lately to save his roster spot and to, you know, not be an entire liability out there. But, um, you know, he's more expendable to me than Kyle Farmer, and I think that's really saying something. Hmm. And we've got two more guys in the outfield before we call it a, a show. Kepler, Max Kepler, uh, for a while there, was one of the team's better hitters. Um, it, he was grooving offensively. It looked like he was really developed. I think it's possible that he's uh, been dealing with an injury, another one longer than than he's said. Yeah. And that's his, his defense has been very good in right field. Uh, I, I give him a solid B and it could be higher if he uh, gets over this neck thing and starts to hit again and stop sliding into first base. Yeah. I gave him a B minus just because um, in this lower offensive environment, it's a one Oh nine weighted runs created plus and solid defense and right. He's been, um, you know, maybe not necessarily a chain mover on a nightly basis, but he's done enough to be, you know, on a, on a really good offense, he could hit fifth or sixth, and you wouldn't blink.
And that's basically what you want out of him, you know? So I, I have no problem giving him a, a decent enough, you know, what did I say a B or B minus. Um, you give him a B minus. Yeah. I'm, I, I think B minus and then skewing toward a B, you know, that, right. uh, what is that? Like an 80, like an 82, 83%. He's been okay. Yeah. I gave him an 85. So last guy in Buxton missed a bunch of time offensively. Uh, he's had moments, uh, overall, it's been a little disappointing offensively, yeah. defensively, which I think is where a lot of his value comes anyway. He's been terrific in the outfield. He's uh, been one of their very best defensive players, and it shows. I give him a B minus overall with a, hopefully a chance for more if he gets hot and gets his slugging percentage going. Yeah, C plus for me. Defense has been good. The ability to be on the field has been mostly good. I mean, he's played 56 games. I'm, I'm looking here. I know Willie Castro has played more. How many guys? Oh, uh, yeah, eight guys have played more games. Um, so it's not as though he's the Iron Man, but he's played more than Kepler, Farmer, Larnick. You know, he's getting in there, which is uh, all you could ask. I think, too, the fact that he hasn't really gone on that one heater that would get him from, you know, league average offensively to, um, you know, more in that Kepler territory, if not above that. I still expect that to come at some point. Uh, he just has he has flashes rather than extended moments, and so for me, uh, yeah, it's a C plus, but plenty of room for growth. Overall, I give the uh, outfielders a C, um, with a chance to maybe improve that a little bit, and that pretty much wraps up, you know, yeah, our first grades, our midterm grades of the year. A minus for me on the infield, C for the outfield. We'll do starting pitchers and and relief pitchers next time. And also, we should grade the the front office and uh, Rocco's staff. I'll do I'll do an A minus on the infield and a C minus on the outfield. Uh, We're pretty close. Really, no standouts in the outfield except Larnick, and he's not even really playing the outfield, so it's really hard for me to give him a really great grade. All right, folks, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Like I said, we'll be with you back with you next time with more grades on the first half of the twenty twenty four season. For the Minnesota Twins, so for Brandon Warren, this is Dave Brown saying uh, thanks for watching, and we are going to see you tomorrow night. Tomorrow night.